Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to fetch data from a database table in a way where you can request data from the related table to be loaded as well. So for instance, if you have a table person and there is a related table address, you can get related address for each person in the response. To demonstrate how it works, I'm going to switch to the data screen and instead of person and address, we actually have some other tables and these are city, country and country language. We will start working with country language and the idea will be to retrieve languages based on some criteria with a related country. As you can see, there is a column in country language called country and that column is a relation to the country table where for every language in this table, there are 984 of them, for every language in this table there is a relation to a corresponding country. So for instance, if we take English here and the percentage presence of that uh, language in that country is 4.8. Let's see what that country is and it is going to be Northern Mariana Islands. That's just an example. This similar re relation or almost identical relation to other countries is going to be present in this column. So to start working with the API and to demonstrate how it works I will switch to the REST console interface and uh, to come up with an example let's say that we want to retrieve uh, only the languages where the presence of those languages is 100% in any given country. Meaning that in the countries that we will get and the languages that we will get, those languages are spoken entirely in that country and no other languages are present. Uh, the query to get those languages is going to be very straightforward since we know that we have the percentage column. What we're going to do is we're going to say percentage equals, equals 100. Uh, let's fetch those languages and uh, we have a bunch of them. In fact, to know how many languages we got, just put in the word count in the object ID, click get and there are 13 languages of that kind. Now, uh, to minimize the amount of data that we, that we get, we can uh, put in the properties that we want to receive, uh, such as percentage in this case and language. Let's run the query again. So there we go. Here are the languages that are spoken in the, in the corresponding countries. But at this point, we do not know what the corresponding country is for these languages. Uh, in order to find out what they are, we can use the retrieval of the relations because each of these languages has a related country. And in order to retrieve that relation, notice that there is a relations field, which is a drop down. And in here, there are uh, all possible relations that sort of trickle down from the language and then they would go to the country and then the country has a capital. Uh, so we can retrieve all of that. So let's just include country and rerun the query. Now, uh, the result that we get is that uh, we have this language. I think it's going to be Crayolo. Um, I may not be pronouncing it right. And then the country where this language is spoken is Cape Verde. Uh, and let's pick another one. So, for instance, English is spoken 100% in Bermuda. Uh, and then we, if we continue down the list, Spanish is spoken in Cuba. And that there are no other languages according to this database. This may not entirely be true, but according to this database, uh, that's what it is. But as you can see now, in addition to getting the languages, each object in the response includes a property called country, and that country is a separate object that describes the country that uh, that that language corresponds to. And this is done simply just by including country into the relations uh, selecting that country in the relations dropdown. What this does in the actual URL is that as soon as we added country right here, there is a parameter called load relations and that it includes the country, which is the relation name or the property name, the related property name, uh, that we ask the analyst to return data for. You can include multiple relations because this country object that we're getting uh, has a relation on its own. In fact, if we go into country and take a look at the schema, notice that country has a, a relation into the city table with a relation called capital, which will be a pointer or a relation to the uh, capital city of that country. Let's come back to our REST console. Uh, we will need to make those selections again. Uh, language, percentage, and the, the query is percentage equals 100 
and uh, we had the country selected. So we can reconstruct everything. But now we can also include country.capital, which is going to be a relation. So now if we fetch this data, so let's do this. Now we, we get the language, we get the country, and inside of the country there's going to be another property, capital. So this way you can uh, cascade and then include uh, nested objects in, in the response. Uh, let's take this URL and uh, open it up in a separate browser just to see what it's going to look like there. So here we have uh, as it actually is formatted a little bit nicer. So this is this is the language, this is the country, and the country now includes the capital. And the same thing is repeated over and over for every single one of these 13 languages that we get the result back. Uh, it's, it's quite powerful because you may have a, a complex schema with a lot of different relations, but uh, using this approach you can include more data, more contextual data uh, to come back to you so that your application can take advantage of this. Uh, very similarly, it's going to work in our native SDKs, Android, iOS, uh, JS, and .NET, but you would be using the object-oriented API to structure your query and request the relations to be loaded. Uh, I also would like to mention that this is not the only way to get the related data. You can actually, what, what I demonstrated is called a single step uh, relation retrieval. Well, we have another option and it's in the documentation that is called two-step and the way that works is you you get let's say a language object from the server and then for that language object you can go back to the server and say hey give me such and such relation and then that as a, as a second step the server would return that data back to you but uh, that will be a subject of another video that's it for now I hope you found this useful thank you and as always happy coding